Eversolo got instantly known for their DMP A6 streaming DAC and preamplifier. After releasing a Master Edition A6, they now introduce a more upmarket A8 at around 2000 euros. The A8 is wider than the A6's and that was needed to fit the double power supply, the 3 piece ESS, AD, DSP and DA conversion set and the R2R volume control. But before diving in too deep, let's first see where the A8 finds its place in your stereo. Being a network player, it needs to be connected to your network over either a network cable or Wi-Fi, so it can be connected to streaming services and internet radio. If you have music on your computer or NAS running either Rune or DLA server, it can be played too. The analog outputs of the A8 have to be connected to the analog inputs of your amp. A set of loudspeakers or headphones need to be connected to the amp. The A8 is to be controlled using the touchscreen, the supplied infrared remote or a smartphone or tablet. Being an analog and digital preamp, a CD deck or CD player can be connected as can other digital sources. A TV can be connected over HDMI eARC to become an audio extension of the TV. Alternatively, a set of active loudspeakers can be connected directly to the A8 to either the analog outputs or to one of the digital outputs depending on the loudspeakers used. The A8 has a very sturdy black anodized aluminium chassis that measures 338 by 248 by 90 mm and weighs 5 kilos. On the front we see the volume control that doubles as a standby switch by pressing. The 6 inch full color LCD touchscreen is identical to that of the A6, as is the menu shown on it since it uses the same streaming engine. On the rear we see the power button, the IEC mains inlet, two Wi-Fi antennas, one Bluetooth antenna and the gigabit network port. Then the digital outputs, a USB A port to connect an external DAC to and a USB 3 port to connect a storage medium to holding music. Then the Toslink out, the SPDIF out and the I2S out on HDMI not to confuse with the normal HDMI port. That can be found here and complies to the eARC standard. So using the TV remote, the TV will also switch on the A8 and control the volume. If you want to connect a computer or smartphone over USB, this USB B port can be used. Then there are two Toslink and two SPDIF digital inputs. A trigger output can switch on active speakers or a power amplifier connected to the A8. A pair of single ended analog inputs and a pair of balanced analog inputs makes it possible to connect analog sources, like an FM tuner or turntable with built in or external RIAA preamp. The analog outputs are also available as both single ended and balanced. On the bottom is a small lid that when opened shows the place where an M.2 SSD module can be mounted. Up to 4 terabyte modules are supported, sufficient for around 8000 albums in CD quality. The inside shows circuit boards over the entire bottom. There is much more board than in the A6 as you can see here. And it's no fake. I use the width of the cooling profile on the streaming module to make sure the scale is identical. On the right side we see the double power supply on a circuit board that is separate from the rest. This part holds the switch mode power supply for the digital part while the transformer for the linear power supply can be found here. All digital inputs and outputs including Wi-Fi and Bluetooth can be found here, just behind the streaming module. Two acousilicon clock crystals take care of the 44.1 and 48 kHz based sampling frequencies. 
This place on the board holds three SI cassette chips. The AK7739VQ does the analog to digital conversion and has a multi-core DSP. The AK4191EQ is a multi-bit Sigma Delta modulator with built-in digital filters that work at 256 times oversampling. It works together with the AK4499EXEQ switch resistor DAC. This two chip solution separates the digital part from the analog part of the conversion. The second part of the linear power supply receives the low voltage AC from the transformer, converts it into DC, stabilizes it and buffers it. The volume control comprises of precision resistors and relays and thus is analog. From there the analog goes to the output buffering. As you can see this is a completely different beast than the A6 and the A6 Master Edition. Like the A6 variants the A8 runs on a modified version of Android 11, the operating system normally used for smartphones and tablets. On the front is a skin running on a basic version of Android. Along the top row it shows a status bar. Here input output connections, network status, storage device, volume and currently playing song are shown. The icons in the center of the screen show several functions while on the right transport buttons, a home button and a return button are situated. Along the right side of the screen we see the volume slider. The music player lets you select music. You can browse on tracks, artists, albums, genres and go to playlists. Let's go for artists. If you want you can go for list view for faster scrolling. Searching for the artist is even faster. Let's do Pink Floyd. As you can see the keyboard doesn't disappear after search. You have to tap the return key right of it to get it off the screen. Let's select the wall and you can see it's a 96 kHz 24 bit FLAC file. If you like you can select the on screen metering here. You can store music on an external USB drive as I did now, add an M.2 SSD stick to the A8 via the lid in the bottom, browse an SMB shared folder on your computer or NAS. Use a DNA or UPnP AV server on your computer or use Rune once the certification has passed. It all works the same as on the A6, so let me show you that part of the A6 review. There were slight glitches in the lower part of the screen. I don't know where they came from, but they don't happen now. Let's go back to the main menu. The streaming menu gives access to the streaming services. Title, Cobus and hi res audio show up first, but others show up when scrolling down, including apps for internet radio. Further down we see music cloud drivers and at the bottom instructions on how to connect to several services. Files let you access storage on the Eversolo, external storage and network storage. Let's see how to access music on my Synology server. It's simply tapping on SMB since I use the Samba protocol, tap the SYN8 to select the NAS, then the music volume and select music to play. In the DSD folder I select 10cc, select the album and tap on I'm not in love. It starts playing right away while showing the file details. Source is used to select input and output, along the top row the inputs below it the outputs. Remarkable is that only one output can be used at the same time with the exception of the analog outputs that can be used simultaneously. Not really a problem but worth noting. Apps open a menu where you can add, delete or reset apps. For instance if you don't use Apple Music you can easily remove it by holding it instead of tapping. If you tap you open the app. The settings menu you can also set the startup volume for when you have a power amp or active speakers connected. Also the volume steps can be set between 0.5 to 3 dBs. 
I skip the display and network menus for they are obvious. In general you can set the language and the options are fast. There are even multiple English versions like Canadian, Australian, Indian, US, XC, whatever that may be and English English. Many other world languages are present, even Dutch, Nederlands in Dutch. The other settings are self explanatory. For reasons I don't understand you can leave this user interface or skin if you like and use a simpler one as seen here. It gives the same options in every menu for as far as I can see. This option is not available in the user interface on the touch screen. Cast brings you to the normal user interface. The Eversolo was listed in my setup 2A where it was connected to my network over the Upton Audio Ether Regen switch with Upton Audio Ultra Caps 1.2 power supply. From there a fiber connection to the Netgear ProSafe GS418 TTP switch on the third floor. See about my reference set of May 2023 for more information. Links at the usual places. The analog outputs were connected to the Marantz PMKI Pearl light amplifier over Siltec London RCA cables. It drives the acoustic energy radiance one loudspeakers connected over Kimber 4 pr loudspeaker cable and supported by the RHEL T5 subwoofer that is connected to the loudspeaker terminals on the Marantz using the cable that came with the sub. An iPad Pro running Eversolo and Rune apps was used to control the Eversolo and was connected over Wi-Fi to the TP-Link Deco M4 mesh network. This sounds very good. The first thing I noticed was the very good sibilance control, directly followed by the low time smearing. It makes that the ears can analyse the time information more accurate and thus can better distinguish between the room acoustics and the acoustics in the recording. As a result room acoustics are less in the way. Resolution is very good over the entire band. This sounds very promising, so let's connect it downstairs to my set of 1B. PA8 was connected over the usual Grim Audio SQM XLR cables to the Air Acoustics AX520 amplifier that drives the PMC FAC 12 signature loudspeakers on stack audio over 70 isolators and connected over AudioQuest Robinhood Zero loudspeaker cable. The network connection comes from the Zissel GS1900-10HP switch and is filtered by the Network Acoustics Eno system. From the Zissel switch there is a fiber connection to the third floor where the Netgear ProSafe GS418 TPP switch connects to the Intel NUC 10i7 FNH that runs Rune Rock on an M.2 SSD and has the music stored on an internal 8TB SSD. A CAT6 patch cable connects the Zissel switch to the internet modem and the TP-Link Deco M4 mesh network that provides Wi-Fi access to the iPad Pro 2 used to control room. The equipment was placed in a Creative Trend 3 rack. In this setup it's even more clear that the A8 sounds very good for the money. It is very balanced too. Qualities are there over all parameters. It's a good stereo image, good focus, good air around the instruments and voices. Lows have a good texture, mids are open in a velvety way and high sound refined. And that's all for a 3000 euro streaming DAC while the A8 costs 2000 euros. I could have added more video on the DSP functions, but I didn't since all DSP that is not needed should be avoided. If you have acoustic problems you should solve those by better placement of the loudspeakers, watch my video, or take acoustic measures. If you have an amp that sounds coloured, replace that. If your speakers sound sharp or boomy after proper placement, replace those. For whatever the problem is, you won't be able to fix it without other sacrifices in the sound quality. Like time smearing, that will increase, and resolution, that will decrease. But hey, it's all aboard, so if you do want it, there is a full suite of DSP functions. 
user interfaces in the A8, yes there are more, might be a little confusing but I have seen only limited comments on the web and the A6 using the same engine is sold by the masses. So it can't be a real problem. Then the outside that looks very nice, well built and with a great touch screen. The wider chassis gives the A8 visual authority over the A6. Eversolo has managed to design a more upmarket model while maintaining what I liked about the A6 Master Edition. Versatility and usability combined with an excellent price to sound quality ratio. It makes me think of the 70s when Japanese companies were getting noticed for good sounding affordable audio equipment. It brought us Accuphase, Stax, Nakamichi and so on. And on that bombshell we come to the end of this video. As usual there will be a new video next Friday at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to my channel or follow me on the social media so you will be informed the new videos are out. Help me reach even more people by giving this video a thumb up or link to this video on the social media. It is much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and lets me improve the channel further. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you next week. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.